What is a complete human? Is it a cover model? Is it a science geek? Is it a fitness expert? Or all of the above and more? Jana and Evan are crusaders that walk the earth looking at today's issues that touch our hearts and minds. The honest and hopeful outlook on the advancement of today's society. The science behind the decay of human relationships. The necessary preparations for future generations. Join us as we look deep inside ourselves and embark on a journey into becoming a complete human. There. So right before the pandemic, there was a study that was done looking at coronaviruses combining uh, irradiated light. So the spectrum of light at the, low, at the at lower spectrum, so UVC light, along with um, methylene blue, uh, was a very significant uh, killer of coronaviruses. Okay, so the combination of the two. Now, since then, there's been several studies that have looked at methylene blue and looked at coronavirus. And one interesting one in the beginning of the pandemic, but I don't know if it's been updated, is that they use methylene blue also for cancer, especially at high doses. And so because methylene blue, so the thing about methylene blue at low doses, it's an antioxidant. It helps with uh, neurotransmitter release. It helps with energy production. But at high doses, it actually has the opposite effect. It's actually an oxidant. It's an oxidative molecule. So it makes uh, potentially more stress on the system. And so that's potentially something you maybe want in, in a cancer, for example. So it's been used in cancer for many, many years. And so they, they had a population of cancer patients that were in France that were all um, taking methylene blue and none of them were getting coronavirus. And they, were, and they actually showed some interesting data related to that. I haven't seen an update on that. Um, there's certainly been interest in um, methylene blue in various ways um, within the whole pandemic. There have been some studies that have looked at methylene blue plus certain spectrums of light to see if it would kill COVID-19. And the answer seems to be yes, but all very, very low numbers of people and all very, you know, very sort of fringe, let's call it, compared to what might be available. Now, we have heard reports of people using methylene blue in the long COVID stage and the people that have had post-COVID syndrome that have had mitochondrial dysfunction as a, resu as a result of that. Now, again, we don't make any claims about any of that stuff with our product, but certainly it is very compelling, uh, very compelling some of the work that's being done because of its work on mitochondrial function. Absolutely. So yes, we can use it for fungus, virus, for bacteria, um, but most of the time it's not used that way anymore because we have antibiotics for those things and everybody loves antibiotics because those are so great for us, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. Lots of thoughts on that one. Yeah. Well, it, very it, interesting. It, it kind of seems that, you know, ultimately with all of the antibiotic resistance that we're seeing that we might, as you pointed out, kind of start heading back to some of these older treatments Indeed. for that very reason is, is all of the resistance, you know, malaria, antibiotics, you know, everything that you've gone through, it's mm -hmm. maybe we should just get a bunch of pharmaceutical methylene blue.